Um, good afternoon. My name is uh, Paul van Schoot, and I'm the coordinator of the uh, master track uh, Fluids, Bio and uh, Soft Matter. It's a great privilege and pleasure for me to describe to you in, within a period of about 10 or 15 minutes uh, what this master track actually uh, entails in terms of uh, topics uh, covered. Uh, let me share my um, screen with you. Um, if I can. Yes, that should do it. OK, so most of you will probably be uh, familiar with the concept of a fluid and uh, with the concept of bio as in biology too, but soft matter maybe not. Um, I'll be trying to show that uh, fluids, bio and soft matter are actually closely linked uh, topics. Uh, let me start with the whole concept of uh, fluid. I mean, this image here, I'm sure that you're familiar with it. This is what happens just after um, a droplet has, uh, of water in this case, has impinged on a surface of water. Uh, after a little bit, uh, a jet uh, shoots up, and all of this is the effect of the combined workings of well, gravity, um, um, surface forces, fluid flow, um, and things like that. Now this happens on the scale of a millimeter or perhaps a few centimeters. But uh, you know, fluid flow is important not only at this scale, it's important also on the scale much smaller than that. Uh, what we're showing here is a little video of E. coli bacteria, so gut bacteria, that are a few microns in size. And these bacteria, as you can hear one, they can actually swim. And uh, swimming, of course, is associated with fluid flow which on the scale of a few microns actually is not so trivial because inertial effects play no role. So a fluid flow is not only important at the micro scale, at the millimeter or meter scale, but at very much larger scales like kilometers. So this shows you um, a reclaimed land close to the, uh, the port of Rotterdam. What it's showing here is sand that has been deposited. In the background, you can actually see um, well, water from the sea. Um, this is kilometer scale um, and kilometer scale structure. The interaction of, of water and sand is, is very much important to the development of these huge industrial uh, scale um, reclaimed land uh, projects, such as in the, um, the port of Rotterdam. But you can even go much, 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 much larger scale. You will recognize here this is a a satellite image of the Earth, or you can see these, these white uh, swirls are actually uh, tornadoes. What we're seeing here is fluid flow on the scale of thousands of kilometers. And fluid here now refers not so much to water or an actual fluid, but to air. Air is also a fluid. Now, here I'm referring to essentially a pure fluid, not entirely true because there might be sand in it, or think there may be bacteria in it. But if you now look at uh, soft matter, soft matter is a fluid with uh, stuff uh, dispersed very finely in it. For instance, here on the left, upper left, we're seeing uh, shaving foam. Shaving foam is essentially water with very finely dispersed um, uh, bubbles of, of air. Um, here we've got uh, hair gel. Hair gel is essentially water plus stuff. And the stuff is usually a polymer. Um, paint, paint is a fluid nowadays, most paints are water-based, uh, so it's water with stuff in it. And uh, the last example I want to show you here is that of, uh, of uh, toothpaste, which is, well, water and stuff in it, um, all kinds of stuff. Now, you might think, of course, so these are low-tech materials, in fact, they're not. These are very complex fluids con you know, con consisting of a fluid plus stuff finely dis dispersed in it. And you might think that these materials, all these materials are uh, low tech materials. They're not, they're high tech materials. They've been designed to behave like a fluid under certain conditions or like a solid uh, under other conditions. Right, so in essence, uh, soft matter is either a soft solid or a complex fluid. Now, so what about bio then? Well, here are a few examples of bio. So this is, of course, as you recognize, a finger and lying on top of that finger is a drop of blood, which looks like a fluid. And in fact, it is a fluid, except that uh, blood doesn't actually behave like simple water. 
in effect, because there's loads of stuff uh, in, in, in blood, in particular red blood cells that make up about 40% of, 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 of the volume of, of blood. Another example here is a natural form uh, produced by the, uh, the spittle bug. Here again, we're actually seeing little uh, bubbles of, of air uh, held together by, uh, by what happens to be water. Um, here, this in this eye, the eye, the eye lens is a soft material, right? This is this is also a large percentage of water, a large percentage of of, uh, of proteins. So that almost sounds already like material science. And finally, this uh, this image here is that of uh, epithelial cells. So these are cells of the skin. This doesn't look like a material, but it, actually it is. It's a self healing material. Is uh, a material that uh, expends energy in order to re restructure itself. Now, in applied physics, we are trying to use what nature has invented over the um, time frame of billions of years in, in order to make materials that can do what we humans are not been able to uh, uh, to do yet. And so, we take inspiration from nature in order to make materials. All right, so there are four uh, research groups associated with the uh, FBSM, so Fluids Bio Soft Matter Track. Um, it's a group of molecular biosensing for medical diagnostics, or MBX, theory of polymers and soft matter, TPS, transport and permeable media, TPM, and fluids and flow, uh, or FNF. There's also a a school associated with this track, which is the, the School of Medical Physics and Engineering. Uh, I ain't told them. I'll come back to that, what that is in a minute. Let me briefly, oh, so so here we have a number of research groups and they, they are standalone, but not really, because are, of course, because the topics are very similar, these groups collaborate with each other and they exchange research projects, they exchange graduate students, they exchange um, undergrad students and so on. So the research themes of the FNF group was flow is, is turbulence of turbulence related turbulent flow in, in fluids like shown here in this uh, video. Um, very chaotic, very, extremely important, um, and not, not just in, in the context of uh, aircraft and uh, fast moving ships, but also cities, etc, etc, airflow in cities. And the second topic is environmental fluid mechanics, which has to do with the fluid flow in conjunction with um, materials such as sand that interact with the fluid. Uh, another topic is a multi-phase uh, and complex fluids. Um, so multi-phase actually means, such as shown here in this uh, cartoon here, combination of two fluids, for instance, oil and water, or blood, which consists of water and cells, that sort of thing. Finally, um, micro and nano hydrodynamics is a research topic relating to fluid flow at very, very small scales, which is, for instance, relevant in uh, inject printing and immersion lithography, which uh, uses made of, of water in order to be able to Treat very, very small structures. So the research themes of TPS, theory of polymers and soft matter, uh, well, there are actually quite a few. The, these are the main ones. One of them is self-assembled and biomatter. What's seen here is a cartoon, actually a computer simulation of a model of a virus, which is one of the topics that we work on. Uh, Multi-scale simulation of polymer dynamics. So what we're seeing here is an image of an atomistic model of polymers and how the polymers react to deformation, for instance. Uh, Non-equilibrium soft matter, such as is the case in, well, the flocking of bacteria, for instance, or uh, self-propelled particles that people are now able to make in, in laboratories. Um, another topic is uh, responsive soft matter, which is soft matter that responds very strongly to, for instance, ch small changes in temperature, uh, the switching of electrical fields, magnetic fields, uh, that sort of thing. And uh, finally, a main research, research topic is, um, is uh, focused around theoretical biophysics, 
looking at, for instance, how cells, as in this little video as can be seen, how cells move in tissues, how tumors grow, um, that sort of thing. Right, the, the research themes of uh, MBX, they focus around um, um, biosensors. Now, biosensors are um, focused, centered around small particles. These particles are called, uh, they're magnetic. They can be surface um, uh, functionalized in order to be able to uh, bind uh, analytes from, say, blood or urine or, or just uh, wastewater uh, to them. Um, they're also uh, trying to make sure that you don't need a lot of, well, in this case, uh, antibodies on uh, to be locked to an analyte to be able to detect it. If you can somehow enlarge the effect of just binding one analyte to a nanoparticle, you've already detect that, then obviously you can go to extremely low concentrations, which is what is needed in the context of, of, um, of, of um, and the medical science. And actually, you can use these little uh, magnetic beads also to do uh, spectroscopy of single molecules. So what's done here is that this magnetic bead is attached to a molecule, and this molecule is attached to a, a surface. Um, you can then apply rotating magnetic fields and um, exert a torque on the molecule. And the response of that torque gives you information about the mechanical properties of single molecules, which is really cool. Uh, finally, the group also focuses on uh, particle actuation for uh, integrated uh, biosensing, which just means that you want, if, if you have different types of particle that um, bind to them different uh, analytes from, say, blood, then you need to collect them in your lab on a chip in different places to do the uh, sensing. So this is also uh, rather cool. And the research themes of the group TPM uh, focus on two main themes. The first one being materials for thermal energy storage, very important. You can actually store energy by absorbing water into certain types of material. They then heat up. Um, if you want to get rid of the water, you have to apply heat again. So this is a way of, 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 of storing heat. Uh, finally, um, the, the second main topic of, of, of focus is that of um, uh, technological uh, porous uh, media, which includes wood, as shown here. This, this is a wooden panel. This is a painting on a wooden panel. This is a cross section of a very small part of the wood panel. Uh, you can see here the paint on that wood panel. This is wood. Wood is a porous medium. Wood is one example. Uh, another example is, of course, concrete. Uh, you might think that these are very old-fashioned um, construction materials, but actually they are, they're not. They're highly relevant, in particular, say, uh, wood, um, because it's, you know, it's bio-based. So you can uh, sequester carbon by using wood rather than, for instance, uh, plastics. Okay, so finally, we've got the School of Medical Physics and Engineering, Eindhoven, SMPEE. -E. It's a collaboration between uh, no fewer than five departments, ranging from applied physics, biomedical technology, mathematics and computer science, electrical engineering, and industrial engineering and innovation sciences. And the aim of that school is to advance healthcare through technology by training academic professionals in medical physics and engineering. How do they do that? Well, by organizing internships, master projects, PhD projects, um, postgraduate uh, engineering degrees, external training courses, and so on. And where does this happen? Well, this happens in collaboration with care and cure institutions, such as neonatal institutes, hospitals, uh, home for the elderly, and so on. Right, so why uh, would you choose uh, uh, this track of fluid, bio, and soft matter? Well, first of all, uh, because it's cool and interesting, well, that's my view, of course, and I would say that. Um, but also because it represents extremely brain, uh, broad range in the chain of knowledge, as it's called, uh, running all the way from fun very fundamental abstract science to very hands-on engineering. Typically, the work is extremely multidisciplinary, requires teamwork, if you want. It goes all the way from really hands-on designing experiments to hardcore, pure theory, um, 
this track is very attractive for a huge variety of industry uh, research institutes and engineering firms going all the way from you know high tech biotech energy chemical bio based health professional care, uh, care uh, food pharmaceuticals and even the finance industry and believe it or not it's a perfect starting point um, for a phd project and there are really many uh, other uh, career options and uh, with that i'm at the end and the end of my little story if you're interested in, in a little bit more background of the various uh, topics that I just covered, uh, just send me an email and or you know a, a meeting request and we can have a bit of a chat. All right, that's it. Thank you very much for your attention and hopefully we see each other again at some point in the Flux building. Okay, so now I need to stop recording. Goodbye.